Welcome to this conferment ceremony. It has been two years since we were able to hold conferments here in our wonderful Barony Hall. We have been through a pandemic, we have all made sacrifices, and the graduates we are celebrating today have studied and made sacrifices, and you, their families and friends, have helped them on their journey. So it's great to have you all here today. In a few moments, I will be asking the head of the School of Humanities to introduce each of our graduates. And they are graduates because there is a process by which you become graduates. It's not only being hooded, it is also um, being capped. And I will take a cap and I will hover it over your head. And once I do that, you're a graduate of the university and you join a family of 175,000 other graduates spread all across the globe. So this is a really auspicious moment. And after we've capped you all, I will then move to the podium and tell you a little bit about our university and the work that is undertaken both in the School of Humanities and in the law school. So it's my great pleasure to declare this congregation open and to invite Professor David Murphy to introduce our students. Executive Dean, in the name of the university and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Master of Science in Applied Gender Studies, Holly Ann Baxter. Sarah Craig. Emma Duffy. <laughs> Mary Edwards. <laughs> Emily Catherine Joan Love. Ailey Rachel MacDonald. <laughs> Lindsay McComb. <laughs> Rina Katri Anina Pasavara. <laughs> Megan Strickland. Tixiana Laura Toledo Peral. <laughs> Ruth Victoria Wilkinson. <laughs> In Applied Gender Studies Research Methods, Robin N. Harris. Kubra Haratolu. <laughs> Katrina Mary Campbell Reed. <laughs> Katie Isabel Young. For the degree of Master of Letters in Digital Journalism, Anna Elizabeth Bryan. <laughs> Kane Daniel Joseph Dinmore. <laughs> Andrew Fleming.
Niu Zhao Huang. Emma Jane Malcolmson. Monica Rumanova Metodieva. Stella Vanellanova Radeva. James Barclay Forbes Ray. Chelsea Anya Sinead Rocks. Katie Scarlett Scott. In Media and Communication, Shannon Maria Carvalho. Martina Cow. Megan Enciso. Tove MacArthur. Mary Kate O'Neill. Heather Stevenson. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and Creative Writing and History, Aaron Dylan Burns Lees. In Journalism and Creative Writing and Spanish with International Study, Laura Jean Arnett. In Humanities and Social Sciences, Nadine MacDonald. For the degree of Postgraduate Diploma in Digital Journalism, Abayat Ragav. In Professional Legal Practice, Nabella K.M. Ahmad. Rebecca Deborah Boyle. Elisa Maria Braceland. Laura Brown. Kirsty Katie Morag Carter. <laughs> Zara Hanif Chowdhury. <laughs> Kirsten Ailey Clark. <laughs> Lucy Grace Clark. Rebecca Coyd. <laughs> Sinead Doherty. <laughs> Mark John Doran. <laughs> Rachel Ferguson. Anna Stewart Gillespie. <laughs> 
Fraser Donald Doherty Godden. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Goldstein. <laughs> Sarah Greenan. So first of all, let me warmly welcome you once again to this special ceremony and this memorable day. A day that marks the culmination of not only many years of demanding work and dedication for our new graduates, but dedication in the most challenging of times. And now you, our graduates, for that is what you are, have graduated in front of your family, friends, and peers. So I'd like to begin my address by congratulating our graduates of 2021 on their achievements and their success with a round of applause from all of us here. In a short while, you'll be invited to join an academic procession which will leave the hall. This is a symbol that you're no longer students, but are now full members of the academic community at Strathclyde. One, as I said earlier, numbers over 175,000 across the world. You join such esteemed company as the explorer David Livingston, John Logie Baird, inventor of the television, whom none of us could do without, former Lord Advocate and Solicitor General Dame Ailish Angelini, politicians Baroness Helen Liddell and Baroness Annabel Goldie, and entrepreneur Sir Tom Hunter. From today, you will go on to take the next steps in realizing your ambitions. It's important that we acknowledge and recognize that you are graduating at a time when the world faces many challenges. The coronavirus pandemic has had far-reaching and unprecedented effects on all of our lives. The pandemic has not only challenged our health systems, impacted our economies, and changed the way we work, it has also had a profound effect upon education but it has also demonstrated what society can achieve when we work together. And it has placed science at the forefront of solutions to all of the challenges that we face. Earlier this month, Glasgow hosted COP26, the summit of world leaders and nations which came together to agree measures to prevent the continued warming of our planet. Amidst high-level diplomacy, Several important pledges were made at the gathering, and it will be up to all of us to ensure that those promises are kept, to push for further changes, and to play our part in putting in place the educational, scientific, and social solutions to make net zero happen. 
We must also recognize that coronavirus and climate change have exposed deep-seated divisions in our societies, weaknesses in our systems, and the denial of facts. Strathclyde is an institution where freedom of thought is encouraged and valued, an institution exemplified by tolerance and inclusivity. It is one which seeks to play a significant role in shaping the world we live in through our teaching, research, and through you, our graduates. As part of COP26, Strathclyde hosted former US President Barack Obama, who spoke with students about the important role that young people can and will play in tackling climate change. The 44th president had a simple but powerful message for those who gathered outside our learning and teaching building. Pausing on the steps, he shouted to the crowd, get active. This is an appeal that I know our graduates will take up, none more so than our graduates of the School of Humanities and the Law School. I know that in reaching this moment, you will all have had support and encouragement of your supporters, families, friends, teachers, and mentors, even more so over the past two years. Many of them are here today in person, or thinking of you on this special occasion. I am sure that you are extremely grateful for their support. Let us take the opportunity to show our appreciation and gratitude to all those who have supported you with a round of applause. <laughs> Similarly, all of our graduates have been helped by my wonderful colleagues here, who have worked hard to provide you with a first-class education and outstanding student experience despite the challenges of COVID and for whom your success is their reward. So graduates, please join me in showing your appreciation of them. <laughs> your success and our success as a university is in no small part due to the efforts of our staff who are delivering our vision of Strathclyde as a leading international technological university that is socially progressive. As a university, we are at the forefront of widening access to higher education, welcoming those with the ability to, to learn regardless of their personal circumstances. And through our groundbreaking research, we are helping change the world for the better. Across the university, our researchers are leading the development of innovative technologies that will facilitate the transition from fossil fuels to clean, sustainable energy sources, such as wind, solar, and hydrogen. This will power our future world and tackle climate change. We're leading the revitalization of this part of the city through the Glasgow City Innovation District which is attracting companies, both large and small, to work with the university to create new ideas, technologies, and solutions for the many challenges that we face today. Our progress and efforts in all of these areas have been recognized in recent years with a host of awards. We became the only university to win the Times Higher Education UK University of the Year twice, We've also been named Business School of the Year, Workplace of the Year, and our colleagues have also won Research Project of the Year. But it has also been a year of significant progress within our faculty. Within the School of Humanities, despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, our students continued to live up to Strathclyde's commitment to be a place of useful learning with gender studies students undertaking research for a range of external partners, from an oral history project on Glasgow's Women's Library during the pandemic, to research supporting the university's equality, diversity, and inclusion team 
in thinking about how to support colleagues with promotion plans in the face of the pandemic. Our students have seen their work published on the websites of leading organizations, from the Wellcome Trust to Engender. Digital journalism students have had their work appear on the BBC Social, uh, Scotland on Sunday, DC Thompson Media, Bella Caledonia, and Positive News. External organizations have been so impressed with our students' work that for some this has led to paid positions and a number of our master's students are staying with us to pursue PhD research that will make a tangible difference to minority communities in Glasgow. Dr. Sally Ann Duncan in journalism, media and communication and her research partner, Dr. Anna Luce of Bournemouth University were shortlisted for two prestigious higher education research awards, the Herald Higher Education Awards and the Times Higher Education Awards for their research project, the Suicide Reporting Toolkit, which offers a method and resources to help journalists report suicide responsibly while under pressure of deadlines. It has been endorsed by the American Association of Suicidology and is supported by the UK media regulator. The Independent Press Standards Organization has also supported this, the DART Center for Journalism and Trauma, the Ethical Journalism Network, and the Public Media Alliance. One MLIT digital journalism student, Anna Bryan, was runner-up in the Student of the Year at the Scottish Press Awards. Anna now works as a live reporter for the Scotsman and the Edinburgh Evening News. She has written for numerous publications as a student, including Scotland on Sunday. Her fellow undergraduate journalism and creative writing student, Daniela Tice, won the Student of the Year category. Daniela, who is currently in her honours year, is editor-in-chief of our student newspaper, The Strathclyde Telegraph. Through a unique project organised by Dr Michael Higgins, Students on the Digital Journalism Masters linked up with students from Pennsylvania State University to report on the US presidential election. Students found themselves at the heart of one of the biggest stories of 2020 when Pennsylvania became a crucial state in the nail-biting race. And in the law school, we are very pleased to be graduating students from the postgraduate diploma in professional legal practice. Our law school is second to none. It is currently home to the One Ocean Hub, an international project to support communities in developing countries to work towards environmental sustainability. It is also home to a new postgraduate program in competition law, as well as programs in internet law and policy, global environmental law and governance, and international commercial law. It is the quality of our research and education and your commitment to study that makes you, our graduates, so highly sought after by employers. I'm sure that today marks the start of a new and successful chapter in your careers. And it is with immense pride that we see you graduate today. And though you may be leaving us, you remain important members of our Strathclyde family, and we hope that you will continue to stay in touch. So on behalf of the principal and all of us at the University of Strathclyde, many congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you. So that is the end of the process of graduating. In a few moments, we will open the back doors to the hall and there will be an academic procession that will take us to the learning and teaching building where there will be refreshments. We ask our graduates to join the procession as it transits the hall and then for families and friends to follow our graduates. So it was great pleasure that I declare this congregation closed and I look forward to chatting with you 
in our learning and teaching building.